Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm King Sway. Princess Sway. Don't hit yourself, Princess. <laughs> Princess Sway. And as you can see, I got her with me. Special guest. <laughs> but today we're going to actually do a Kill Count reaction. It's my yeah. first time. I've actually been a fan of Kill Count. The yeah, reason I I've been watching it with him because I always like Kill Count and I never watched it before. So I always watch it with him. One of our favorite things to do is actually watch scary movies together. Yeah, since we like scary movies. But uh, I learned about Kill Count from my son, Slayer Gaming. You Which often is see Bubby. Him. Yeah, she calls him Bubby. Yeah, all the time because that's his name. But uh, we're going to jump into this. <laughs> Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James H. And, East, and today we're looking at Countdown, released in 2019. Countdown is the feature debut of writer and director Justin Deck, based on his 2016 short film of the same name. Both films have the same story. A new app can tell people exactly when they're going to die, and it proves to be quite accurate no matter how hard they try to change their fate. Countdown is thus often called the killer app movie, yeah, even though yeah. it's actually a demon, not the app itself, killing people. Oh, and it's even Khalil though from, uh, there was an actual Black killer Lightning. app movie yeah. called Bedeviled, released in in 2016. But I think the world has collectively agreed to forget about Bedeviled, and frankly, I don't blame us. Unfortunately, Countdown's pretty forgettable too. Anyone who has paid attention watching horror movies he just can tell you pretty exactly how every beat of this thing goes. I've seen that guy, and because uh, of a PG-13 rating, it's unable to get graphic with the boys, its kills, so I've instead seen relying the boys. on frequent and cheap I've seen more other things, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. Still, it's got some decent direction, a well-designed demon, and some light-hearted fun to it. So if you're new to horror movies or want something you don't have to get too invested in, you can definitely pick something worse to watch. Besides, I think it's important to occasionally look at mediocre and unremarkable horror movies, just to remind ourselves that the genre is not always good and not always bad. Sometimes it's just, you know, whatever. How many kills occur in this horror movie? Well, yeah, there's an app for that. Right now, Princess. Or, sorry, I mean there's a YouTube host for that. And it's me! The movie begins at a solo cup party. And by that I mean exactly what you know I mean. Look at that game of beer pong. A small splintering of this young hip party is seated around playing drinking games and talking shit about their peers. Liz Murphy needs to stop posting pics of her food. We get it, Liz. You're vegan. As long as y'all ain't talking shit about my boy Austin Zazer there, he of scary stories to tell in the dark, and his YouTube channel. I haven't seen He's got a web series with Kevin Smith on there called Sun in Lockdown that I found very endearing. Good work, I might have to check that The kids out. end up stumbling across an app Take called Countdown that has a singular Cassandra yeah, purpose. Yeah, if you could know exactly when you were going to die, would you want to know? Ooh, no. How are you going to react no. to that, Genie? Everyone, including the reluctant Courtney here, downloads the app and conducts the universal daily lie, then compare their countdowns. Uh, yeah, Most of their readouts range between 20 and 60 odd years, but Courtney's working on a bit of a shorter timetable. It says I only have three hours to live. You're gonna die! Oh, man, it sucks that Austin Zazier's not in the rest of this movie. Courtney goes to leave with her boyfriend Evan, but with his BAC getting into the 10th decimal place, she doesn't need 13 reasons why she shouldn't let him drive. Really? Not wanting to let the app's why. death prediction come true, she opts to walk home by herself instead as Evan drives off angry. <laughs> Whoa, Court, was that a clown in your pocket or our- Oh, agreement broken. Yo, and they sending Dementors out to enforce uh, those? Here it is again in case it is. Oh, yeah! Courtney gets yeah. home and tries to calm herself down, but that eventually her clock right runs out. What I feel like this is going to be like some, um, never mind. I, mean, I guess I'll counter it. I was literally about to say Even I think it's going to be like some Final Destination type stuff. There? 
but oh, never yeah, mind. No, it whatever was it is, it's coming hot. straight out for it's, it's not going subtly crucial. like death it's doesn't pop this thing. It's like, it looks like her time was supposed uh, to run what is out it? and talk um, since at that very moment, whatever. a tree branch was going through her seat. With the pretty well done opening scene out of the way, we begin the movie proper by meeting our real main character. Hospital intern Quinn Harris is working hard to become a nurse, which means rolling carts down hallways and comforting pre-op patients. Evan, the car crashing drunk driver, tells her about the countdown app that correctly predicted his girlfriend's death. And now it's saying that I'm gonna die during that surgery. Quinn mentions the app to her co-workers as they celebrate her passing her nurse's exam, oh, look. which once again it's leads pain. to everyone I mean, uh, the length of her mom. lifelines. 57 years. That'll make me 6, 7, 10, 98. Well, good for you, Dr. Sullivan. Or shouldn't the we say Dr. Wrong. Centenarian? Oh, Quinn installs the app and well, he agrees to the terms and conditions, but, um, only to find out she's got two days and change left to live. If only she had that much time before like having to deal with Carlisle. Doc Sullivan's inappropriate like workplace behavior. But the countdown no, for that is no, Twilight from five, home, the Twilight four, movies. three, two, I just don't watch them because, you know, I hate them. Quinn goes to her childhood home to get her birth certificate, but it's a place filled with Little sister, I blame you for that. So she tries to sneak in and out without seeing anyone. She fails when she runs into her younger sister Jordan, who doesn't appreciate Quinn's constant absence. See you in another six months then? Cool. Aw, don't be like that, Jordan. Come on, you want to build a snowman or something? <laughs> their sisterly squabbles wake up their snowman? dad Charlie, and before That's Quinn can get out of there, he gets her on the hook to visit their mom's grave that weekend. With Evan's countdown saying he's got three minutes left, he decides to ditch his surgery in an attempt to keep himself safe. These are human broken. Oh shit, dude, the RAM app is pissed again. And don't look now, but the enforcer's been sent out. Maybe you'll be okay if you just... <laughs> nope, get on out of there! He goes to a stairwell of stock sound effects and sees Courtney standing on the steps, looking a little bit more backwards uh... than the last time he saw her. His phone falls down the stairwell and gives us a countdown to our second kill of the film. Quinn finds Ow. out about Evan's That's death from Nurse Amy, played by Tachina Arnold, who is one of the kick-ass Greek chorus gals in Little Shop of Horrors. Remembering what he said about the app, she was grabs that, uh, his phone to investigate, whatever Campbell, and though it takes some Campbell effort, too? is able to unlock it. Okay, you know who she is. Hey, don't you What's come good, to chick? daddy us, mister. You keep your eyes to yourself. And, you know, looking forward, if you can. Perhaps getting close to after seeing like Evan's I was cold was. body, Quinn calls her dad and cancels her cemetery visit. And by the sound of her phone, she just canceled her trip to the grave in more than one way. <sighs> That's how you get visited by hospital mm -hmm. ghouls. I saw the guy in the background. Dr. Sullivan corners Quinn in a room, and after giving her a hug that should definitely be more ass out, he implies that she should pay him back for all the career help he's provided. I guess you're right now. Oh, I don't think that's appropriate. Man. Elizabeth Lau just can't get away from obsessive stalkers, huh? The doctor doesn't take no for an answer, a much more physical villain than the specter she passed a few minutes ago. And when Quinn tries to report the incident to Nurse Amy, she gets talk blocked by Sullivan, who pulls Amy away for a task. That son of a bitch. <laughs> Yet we know, phone, user agreement broken. Quinn looks up Countdown in an internet search and finds an article about Courtney, then a video from a commenter saying, Saying she too is experiencing unintended spooky side effects from the app. Like last night, I saw my cousin who died in April. I saw him. The woman then says it's here, and I'll believe her and count her as dead, even though plenty of the comments think it's fake and or bullshit. Eh, they're probably right, Quinn. <laughs> Never mind! Since Quinn can't get Countdown off her phone, she takes it to a repair guy who's not too concerned about getting good Yelp reviews. Where's your manager? Let me go get him. Yeah, yeah. go right. get him. Hold on. Hello, I'm the manager. Something I can help you with? Derek here is played by comedian Tom Segura. I can't say anything. I've done that. Yeah. Bright spot, I've done that. Breathing life into the paint by numbers I'm the manager. Clock I'm, with I'm his character you. work. I trust you. Something in your eyes says you're a normal completely sane person. He sells her a clean new phone, but the thing gets corrupted in no time. Next. 
and the countdown app is once again unable to be removed. Uh, Another wait, customer wait, named wait. Matt hears Quinn Matt. freaking out, so he goes to Matt the parking lot the and shows phone. her that he's part of the countdown club too. They head to a bar and talk about the app's user agreement and Painkiller meant to be funny. Yeah. Did you read it? Yeah, terms and conditions. Every it, word. If really? your phone's on, turn no. it Let's off. Let's see a little energy here, people. Come on. Wanting to read over the agreement the again, game. they decide the to game. use the phone of a drunk conspiracy theorist barfly played by John Bishop, who, 35 years earlier, played a very excitable bully in Silent Night, Deadly Night. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> oh. That's what I thought you said. Reading over the terms and conditions more closely, they discover the clause likely causing their problems. Any attempt to use information derived from Countdown to alter the user's fate will result in a breach of this agreement. Accept the terms of our fate. Matt says he attempted to alter his fate when he canceled the trip he would have been on when his countdown would hit zero. Just like Quinn canceled her cemetery visit, which also would have occurred at the end of her death clock. You know, I think it's pretty obvious there there's only one explanation here. Demons. What? Yeah! Wait, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it seems like demon stuff to me. I guess it's demon stuff. They're directed yeah, to a I demonologist by a priest at the guy? hospital, but on their way to go see him, Nurse Amy pulls Quinn aside, leaving Matt to do his best Ian Malcolm impression. No, I'm talking to myself. That's, that's chaos theory. Matt has a bathroom run-in with the feet of a young boy who just can't pick which stall he wants to poop in. Hell, he can't even figure out how to walk backwards without just... breaking his ankles. Damn! The oh. lights flicker off, there's a scary flying demon cave, but ah! then it disappears and that scene is over. Nurse Amy takes Quinn into a surprise HR meeting where Doc Sullivan has managed to get out in front of her complaint. But you cornering me in my office like that? That wasn't okay. It needs to be addressed. Quinn is understandably pissed about her abuser's, uh, what were those comments saying? Oh yeah, bullshit. And she storms out of the room when no one listens to her side of the story. She seems like a very unstable young woman. Quinn and Matt go to a church to meet their demonologist and find him in the back listening to Lil Nas X and munching on Jesus crackers. Mmm, body of Christ. Father John is played by PJ Byrne, who was the sex pest in oh, the okay, best I remember that one. Yeah, I remember yeah, and that, it's that's great to see him from. in a less obnoxious role here as an excitable but inexperienced demon obsessed priest. If I remember correctly, he's the guy who died in the Bible is like from the, the other acupuncture. Novel. Producer Sean Anders calls Father John the Comic Con priest, and his character, along with Derek the phone repair dick, points to how the filmmakers were hoping to make Countdown a fun horror movie. Makes sense that this movie would have a comedic tone since producer Anders primarily works in comedy, having written Hot Tub Time. Machine I like and that written one. and directed the Daddy's Home movies. Nah. In fact, the producer met director Justin Deck when Deck was a Mommy PA on Anders' first Wait. studio Jay film, 2008's eight. Sex Drive. Always that's maintain our first those initial. connections, folks. Wait. Father John Wait. tells Quinn and Matt a story about a Roma woman Mommy, like, who once what? told the prince yeah, when he would die. Uh, when the prince Daddy's tried to movies. avoid his fate, he got hit with a cosmic punishment in the form of a fictional demon. It's the demon. Ozen. Ozen? That scary mofo tormented the priest until his prescribed moment of death, which is the same fate that awaits anyone who breaks Countdown's terms and conditions. Hoping to get more info from the app, Quinn and Matt return to Derek and give him their credit cards to hack into it. This feels illegal. I like it. He opens the app's code, and after noting that it has some Latin written into it, begins searching up their names. Derek sees that he has 32 years left, and decides to alter the code and set himself up for an oldest living person record. When he goes to look up Quinn's code, they discover that her sister Jordan's name is also listed inside the app. Our clock is the same as mine. Actually, no. Hers is three minutes shorter. Did you just well actually this woman about her sister dying, dude? Yep. He changes all their codes and takes off for a Tinder date, leaving Quinn and Matt a little more relieved now that they'll live to be Nona and hey, Octogenarian. Still, they figure this whole experience is as what? good an excuse as any to stay the night with each other. Do you want to be alone tonight? 
Not at all. Hell at no. Quinn's house, Matthew yeah, that turn around, I, hashtag mm, hell no. When he was 10, his younger brother got sick, which took up all his parents' attention and got the six siblings some sweet toys. You stupid robot dinosaur. Whoa, whoa, ain't nothing stupid about no robot dinosaur. Anyway, Matt took the dino robot, robot from awesome. his dying bro. Don't get me started, we have them around here. He I'm not joking. Until this Hold very on. day, sit, or sit. about how his dead brother would visit him in hospital bathrooms. Quinn also opens up and says how once upon a time I wasn't joking. She was they young, messed it up. They ripped off his off jaw, man. They ripped off his jaw. Went out to look for her, she got killed by a drunk driver. With their misery tale trade complete, the two of them have earned a snuggle sash. Oh, I love snuggle sessions. Don't you, Matt? Yo, are you calling my name? Wait, if you're... Oh, my God! Oh, Turns yeah. out their app hacking didn't work worth shit. And both of them are back down to their final hours. Jordan is as well, which is why she's getting tormented by Ozan, who appears as their dead mother. Why did they hide under the pit? Quinn comes and gets her, and the three of them go back to Father John, who translates the right, Master the app's code. This curse will come upon you will pursue you and overwhelm you until you are utterly destroyed. This is good. This, this is, is like good. really oh, good. Yeah. He's excited because he thinks he knows how to break the curse. All they have to do I is fly, no, I'll hop by myself. by making their death clock wrong, even if only by a single second. They create a protective symbol on the ground using white paint and blessed holy songs. The plan is to stay inside its boundaries, keeping them safe from deadly demons, until Matt's clock runs out and Satan is proven wrong. As his countdown nears its end, Ozen comes a calling, but he's unable to cross the sodium boundary. No matter how scary Get the salt. I really like Get the Ozen's salt. design, which was done by Scott Stoddard, salt. who worked on the Friday remake, I don't like and Howard Berger no, of A&B, like who worked on uh, the everything. Salt. They based the design off a drawing by Aaron Sims, Stranger who also Stranger created Stranger Things' as Demogorgon, and K&B effects artist Dirk Rogers portrayed the demon on set after, after a makeup process that only of, took a uh, single hour. Stranger Surprisingly, Ozen is almost entirely practical, aside from some digital augmentation. Okay. around his eyes. Unable to get in, Ozen decides to lure Matt out by sending in the greatest toy of all time, motherfucking robot dinosaur. Ozen appears as Matt's younger brother again and admonishes him for his childhood thievery and gets him to take a step outside the salt circle so it can grab him and pull him away. By the time Quinn gets outside to help, Matt is hit by a truck and smashed straight into a tree. Poor guy. Anyone got a painkiller to give him? Might make his last seconds more comfortable as they run out oh, right on time. Solidifying painkiller giving. Pa he plays painkiller and black lightning. Jordan's bleeding from a spill she took in the basement, so Quinn um, takes her to the hospital she works at, probably hoping to get the family raised. While there, she's approached <coughs> by another nurse named Rachel, played by Lana McKissack, who once had a YouTube channel, and who very nearly became a drunk Disney guest back in the day. Rachel tells Quinn that she heard about what happened with Slimy Sullivan, and that she too has been a victim of the guy's harassment. Rachel's revelation gives Quinn an idea. If she can't prove Satan a liar by keeping someone alive, Maybe she can do it by making someone punch their time card early. With her and her sister's countdowns nearing an end, she decides her only option is to orphan some vampires. Quinn goes to Sullivan some and comes on to but him, saying that she wants her job back and is like. willing to do anything for it. She leads him to a closed wing of the hospital, where he follows a trail of her attire. But this game of cat and mouse sniffs when the mouse yes. runs up and starts beating right. the shit out of the cat. Quinn goes to stab Sullivan with a fatal dose of morphine, but he just says no with the help of his friend Ozen. She catches Ruh. up to him, kicks him in the nuts, oh, and shouts a ow, that reference. That made, that made me hurt for a second. But even after she chucks a fucking crowbar at him, she's unable Ow. to kill him thanks to continual Fuck interference me. by the bozos and others. Jordan staring down the end of her death clock meaning she might get cancelled early without a satisfying conclusion. Damn, Ozen, you're really about to throw a high school girl through a window? That's ruthless. He's just about to kill Jordan when Quinn appears with a plan C in hand. Unable to extend someone's life or shorten someone else's, Quinn has decided to end her own life early to make Satan a liar and finally break the curse. Ozen tries to stop her with a hallucination of their dead mom, but Quinn sticks to her plan and sticks herself with an overdose of more Morphine. Sorry, Ozen. Floating Quinn in the air ain't about to save her. She's dead, ahead of your clock. Meaning Satan's just like Paul Giamatti, a big fat liar. With his curse broken, 
goes and straight up disintegrates right in front of them and drops Quinn's body Ash. to the ground. A distraught Jordan tends to her dead sister and finds some post-mortem instructions on her arm. Looks like really? she can save Quinn through the power of, all together now, drugs. It works, and Quinn is revived. But I'm gonna leave her on the kill count, because I think she would have technically had to die in order for the plan to work. I don't think you can just fake a death for a demon. So to me, it still technically counts as a kill, yeah. even if they did throw a reverse Uno card at it. Does that reverse, kind of reverse. in some earlier episode? Reverse, Almost reverse. certainly. I mean, there's 240 of these fucking things. Quinn's family finally makes that cemetery visit, and they see on the news that Doc Sullivan has been arrested. So the movie ends with everything great, right? Wrong, because Quinn just found a new app on her phone. Oh, yeah, there's also a mid credit scene where Kevin is shown being piggish on a Tinder date with fellow comedian Christina Pazitsky, who also happens to be Tom Segura's real-life wife. Oh, that's nice. The app's little scream goes off, and we hear his countdown changing, but I'm not gonna count a kill here, because Kevin's original timeline showed him living for decades more. And it doesn't make sense to me that Ozin would make himself a liar just for widow old Kevy. How many kills did I count up and count down? Let's find out and... You know, actually, I don't really feel like doing the numbers today. I just... Tons of conditions broken. <laughs> what? I didn't sign no contract. I'm my it's own boss, good. Ozin. Though I guess, you know... Maybe I should just go do the numbers anyway, just, you know, just in case. Just in case, homie. You wait, you look back. You know, just, just there were five deaths in Countdown, though only four of them stayed permanent. Huh, lower body count than I'd expect. Yeah. Oh well, at least it gave us one of those rare female majority pie charts. With a runtime of I 91 think minutes, that left us with a kill that. on average every minute. Yeah, we shot a movie, it's called Red with Envy. I'll give the golden shout out to everybody to help with that. To Evan. But obviously, my computer one of these kills were bangers, but yeah, this was the best directed. Like, Don't shut for lamest kills. Go check it out and hit the bell. Since we couldn't really see it. what happened. Check out our and video. that's it. Countdown came out in 2019, and it's just one of those whatever movies, you know? On Friday, we look at a classic, the 1933 Invisible Man. But until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this Kill Count. I want to thank some patrons like Colton Bell, Amanda Kronstadt, David Scholar, Abby, Matthew, Mitch Gibson, and Abigail Ann. I'm looking to make some tweaks to the set going forward. I would love to hear your advice. No, what we do you want to watch see? That I know I had the Deadbeat sign up there we before. Saw I don't know if I have it up there again. The babysitter I'm just and babysitter killer queen. Yeah, but we saw this one. The colored lights that were in the back, yeah, those aren't there right yeah. now. Do you okay. miss those? Did you notice those? Like I said, we watch scary movies for fun. Like this. Jay doesn't like it, but what you want there? I was very entertained by that. I was loving it. I didn't, and then all the people that were in there. Oh, Hostel. We had Hostel. And the dude gets his fingers chopped. Okay, let me not say anything. Jay, that was one of Jay's movies. And I, I, I was like, eh, maybe. But I liked it. I ended up liking it. Especially when the girl had her eye uh, cut out. She was all on and she had to cut it out. And then she was like, oh, no, screw this. And jump in front of the train. Okay, okay, okay. I'm rambling. But no. Mwah. That, I, I, I loved it. I thought it was pretty cool. Not even pretty cool. I thought it was very cool. I am a fan, of, as I said, I'm a fan of Kill Count. Thanks to my boy, Slayer Gaming. Literally. Wait, He's my boy. Can I say hi to Alex? Yeah, baby, go ahead. Hi, Alex. If you can hear me, um, can you <laughs> give a big shout out and hit the subscribe button? <laughs> She's already subscribed, baby. <laughs> Except for a shout out. Okay, well, she'll give you a shout out on her channel. Okay. But... As she's been saying, hit the notification button, you know, subscribe, like, and, uh, hit like, and, you know, hit the bell. We cover, uh, we just start covering Kill Count as of this episode, uh, this video, but I will be doing more. Uh, I was on the fence about doing it, but I don't think anyone's reacted to that, so I think we might be the first ones. And this is the sign for A. It she is. does sign language and stuff like that in school. Um, we do Kill Counts, we do... Death battles, we do epic rap battles. Sometimes Sentinel takes. Alright, as she was saying, uh, hit the notification button and the bell and everything. And um, we just started doing Kill Count. I was on the fence about it. 
we had a technical problem we had, with some editing things. Uh, the camera started messing up. Apologies. We, I'm pretty sure I fixed it. I fixed this in post. But um, no, uh, kill count, and we do epic rap battles. Um, we do death battles. And a lot we of, do and we do fight battles. Yeah, death battle. We do Caleb City, uh, King Vader, and, and a lot of other things. Anything yeah. really that catches my interest. Yes. So, if you have, as I've been saying before, if you have anything you want us, want me or, or us to react to, let me know. Let me know down in the comments. Let me know if you like something. Let me know if you didn't like something. Let me know if you just want to shoot a breeze. I'm up for it. And let and let anyone know if you like something or not. Mm -hmm. So, I'm King Sway. Princess Sway. And we're going to see you in the next one. Bye.